Hi there. I'm Leonard Boyd and I'm the other half of Backspindle Games. And what I'm here to do tonight is to tell you how Kodinka works. How it plays, what are the mechanics and most importantly how to win. So without any further ado, it's time to go down. So this is a Kodinka playing board. It's basically a 4x4 grid and sitting on that are 16 tiles. We have four different types of tile, carrying symbols representing fire, water, air and earth. Each player will be in control of one set of those tiles. If I was sitting at this side of the board, I would be controlling the fire tile. So I have one, two, three, four tiles in play. Now each one of those tiles has the same symbol printed on both sides. One side in gold, the other side in stone. At the start of the game, each player draws four key discs, which are these discs along here. Now you keep those hidden from your opponent, but on the reverse of those, they show four key patterns which you must achieve in order to win the game. Now the, pattern, the discs will show both the pattern you must achieve, whether it's a straight line, or four corners, or a block of four, but importantly, it also tells you what colour symbol must be showing on those tiles when you achieve that pattern. So that's your objective. The first person to achieve all the patterns wins the game. Now how do you do that? Okay, on your basic turn, it's very simple. You move one tile and you flip one tile. It's as simple as that. Your move must always start with one of your own tiles. So if I'm playing fire, I must start to move from one of my own tiles. I can pick that tile up and I can swap its position with any adjacent tile, including diagonally. So my move might be, I can pick this tile up, which is one of mine. I move that one into its position and I drop it there. That's my move. The second part of your basic turn is your flip. Now your flip can always be any one of the 16 tiles on the board. So it can be the tile I've just moved, it can be any one of my other tiles, but importantly, it can be any one of anybody else's tiles too. So I've moved a tile, I can then flip a tile. I can pick any tile on the board and turn that over from stone to gold or from gold to stone. That's your basic turn. Now the fun bit comes in. In addition to your basic turn, each player starts with a number of these little tokens which are known as luck tokens. And with those luck tokens, a player can buy additional moves on their turns. You don't get many of them, so they are precious, but they do give you quite an advantage if you choose to use them. On this little card here, are the luck actions that you can buy with your luck tokens. Now they range from things like simple double switches where you can swap two tiles with two adjacent tiles to more complex moves like line push where a line push would let you lift one tile from an end of a row, bring it to the other end and then shift the whole line up. To do that costs you one luck token, which you then would mark on your card to say that you've done that action. Okay. Other actions you can buy are things like a block rotate, where you can rotate four tiles, clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, you've got a double switch, as I've said. You've got a line flip, where you can turn over every tile in a line. Or you've got a block flip where you can turn over every tile in a block of four. Now, one of my favourite ones is to do with this little totem standing in the centre. That is a lock totem. And what that allows you to do is lock a number of tiles for one complete round. So if I want to spend one of my lock tokens, I can place it on my lock card and I can then pick up this lock totem from its 
central position which is neutral. There are no tiles locked when it's sitting here. But if I drop that on to a blue crystal, it locks these four tiles until it comes back to my turn. So no other player can move those tiles during this round. If I move it from the centre onto a red crystal, it locks that line in the same way and it cannot be moved until my turn ends, in which case the lock returns back to its neutral position and play continues as normal. So that's the basics of how you play. You must achieve all your four patterns and you must achieve those patterns matching with your tiles in the correct colour, either stone or gold, as shown on your discs. Now there's one more thing that I want to tell you about, and that's these little cards sitting here. These are trap cards. At the start of a game, these are shuffled and each player is dealt one trap card. That is placed face down, the player may not look at it. He's not allowed to look at it at all, until one of two things. You can either choose to spend one of your precious luck tokens, which lets you look at the reverse of this card, and then you can choose to play it whenever you want. Alternatively, you can play it blind, which at any time in the game, you can take your trap card, you turn it over, you paste it face down with the red arrow pointing towards the board, and all the tiles on the board will flip to match that pattern. Now nothing moves position, but all the tiles will turn over until that pattern is matched. In this case, we would have four gold in the center, surrounded by all stone tiles. Now that might help you, it might hinder you. It might stop your opponent from getting their last line, which gives you a chance to catch up. So that's your trap card. And that is basically how to play Katina.